live, live from Bethesda, Maryland and Fentner Heights, New Jersey, where my lips are moving, but my voice isn't matched up or synced up with those lips. But who cares? You can hear me. You can see me live from Bethesda and Ventnor Heights, New Jersey. It's Zach and Ray doing whatever it is we do on a Thursday night. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> it's pretty much what we do on a Thursday night. Yes. Um, okay, so quick question: um, Are my before, dad's before lips you out? before you ask a quick question? I can I give a personal shout out to our dear friend Melissa and her uh, photoshopping skills um, with with me on a ski slope and you basically holding up a mountain almost. We, we will get back to that. We will. We will. I'll pull that up. We'll spend some time reviewing um, the really awesome Photoshop job that everyone um, everyone had done. Melissa, yes. Be the thing. However, Dad, <laughs> let's, give, let's give everyone who's watching this stream that wants the info and then they don't want to hang out with us for an hour. That's cool. We get it. Let's give them the info right up front. Thank you, Alex. We appreciate the thoughtful donation as well. But Thank Pops, you, Alex. Let's give everyone the information. A video went out today. We filmed it yesterday or two days ago about the chip crisis and what's going yes. on, right? What is actually happening? What do we expect? I'll pull up on the screen some new data, but like give us that lay of the land again and let's have a conversation about it. Also, I think we'll spend a lot of time tonight reviewing the different comments about the chip shortage as well on today's video and in the YA community. That's where we'll focus our attention. But Pops, let us hear it. Well, it's 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 not a shortage, as I dubbed it. It's a it's a full blown crisis at this point, and it's it's a crisis because of many many variables. Um, not everybody's aware of the fact that the chips that are used for cars are older chips, and the profit margins in those chips aren't quite as high as the newer, more um, advanced chips that that a lot of the chip manufacturers are producing today. So when the automobile industry a year ago, March or April or May, whenever it was, when, when the whole country shut down for COVID and they couldn't produce cars, they canceled their chip orders. Well, the chip manufacturers didn't want to stop making chips, so they opened up that available space to other consumer electronics and they started making the more high profit margin chips for the newer consumer electronics. Once the car business got back or the manufacturers thought it was going to get back to normal and they wanted to get chips again, well, there wasn't availability because the chip makers had, had given that production space over to others. So you combine that with the chip maker saying, well, we don't want to go back to making the, the lower profit margin chips. We want you to figure out how to in, include the higher profit margin, newer style chips, uh, newer technology chips into your vehicles. Then not everybody's aware of it, but making chips is extremely water intensive. There's a drought in Japan. Japan's one of the major manufacturers of chips. Well, if they can't get as much water and they're rationing the water, they can't build as many chips. Then one of the major chip manufacturers had a, had a fire at one of their facilities. That knocked the, that plan off, uh, offline for a while. And then COVID has, has devastated the workforce in Malaysia at the Malaysian chip plants. So there's just a whole host of reasons as to why we can't get chips for cars. Uh, part of it is because they're, they're low uh, profit margin chips. And the other part is that that, that production has been given up to other chips. And, and it's going to take time to get back to what we used to consider normal. So let's address a question. It came up here in the chat, and this is from U of M student. That's some tasty looking pho in that avatar. Thank you for the contribution. Yes, when they thank you. In chips in the 2021 cars, Dad, that are sitting and waiting, will these cars be sold at a discount? And, and I want you to address that question, obviously, but I also want to share something we've learned from YA community members. We are seeing some of these, especially Ford vehicles that have been sitting in fields, starting to get rationed out with chips. And we know that because folks are going in to do factory orders at the dealership and they're being given a VIN Instantly. right then and there. 
Yes. And the only way that can happen, the VIN does not get produced until the vehicle gets off the manufacturing line, or in this case, when it gets put off the manufacturing line and into a grass field. There are chip, chip-deprived vehicles that are now making it to market that we're seeing. But what's your take on this particular question, Dad? What's going to happen? Well, I, you know, I, I, I think this is going to affect mostly Ford. And, and I'm not convinced that Ford is going to spend all that much marketing dollars uh, to throw at the 2021s that are just getting the chips. They'll just delay the 2022s coming into the dealers. So that the, the only thing the dealers will really have to sell will be the 2021s. And let me tell you, as a salesperson, you sell what you have. You don't concern yourself with what you don't have. Um, so if all you have are 2021s, you're going to figure out a way how to sell them because that's how you're going to get paid. So I, I will there be some incentives that Ford places on those vehicles? I'm sure there'll be some. Will it be to the same level that we've seen in past years? I would seriously doubt it. But I, I think there'll be some incentives. Um, and there's going to be issues because a lot of those vehicles sat for months and months and months. So as a consumer, you'd want to make sure that there's no flat spots in the tires. You want to make sure that the battery's still good. I mean, there's just you, there's just so many eventualities that can happen to a car that's sitting doing nothing in a field. I, I, I mean, you know, mice and rats, for whatever reason, love to nest inside engine compartments, and their favorite food is electrical wiring systems. So there you, that's my answer. That's my take. No, it's, it's a, uh, it's a good, it's a good lesson learned essentially. Like from your experience, you managed dealerships that had inventory out the wazoo. You had cars that would sit for a long time. It's called lot rot. Okay. What's happening when you've got <laughs> tens of thousands of vehicles sitting in grass fields, there's lot rot. And so I think yes. a big, honestly, like it's, it's for the remainder of 2021, but it's going to be people buying quote unquote new cars in 2022. Check if your car has lot rot. And the one way to know would be see when the VIN plate in the door jam is going to tell you when the date of manufacture was. Yes. That's going to be a huge indicator if it was a 2021 that was sitting around waiting for chips. And the other thing is you can't get a pre-purchase inspection on a new car, but you sure as hell can take it for a test drive, make sure everything checks out because there's likely going to be lot rot. Uh, there's a strong possibility. Yeah, there really really is. So Pops, I actually want to pull up on the screen. Let me do the first screen share of the night, show some data. So we got a couple things here. Um, we have back on automotive news, some good news for yes. us, you know, nearly all GM plants in the US to be online next week. That's awesome. We need more and more and more of that. Yes. Let's see. We also have, I pulled it up here, the customer, whoops, I've got the um, the average wholesale used car prices. We'll look at this first. And then I have over here, we're going to look at the uh, customer incentives too. Gotcha. So we'll come back to customer incentives here in just a second. But wholesale used car prices, we, we um, have an, uh, an upcoming video. I think it should be out tomorrow or the next day uh, from the Black Book report. But here's an example as well. We're seeing wholesale used car prices start to tick back up. So this is for August. This data comes from KAR Global, um, Auction Net, and Black Book. So mm -hmm. Black Book report, and then we have this aggregated report, and you see wholesale prices were up 3.2% from the prior month, July. So we're starting to see wholesale prices that had declined for just a little bit, seven weeks, starting to come back up. Yep. And, and I think we will continue to see that moving forward. Um, the if there's a shortage of new cars, that means there's a shortage of trades, which means there's going to be a shortage of used cars. So uh, as long as there's these continuing shortages, then whatever used cars are available, they're just going to become much more uh, valuable to the dealer. So they're going to pay more on a wholesale level and they're going to charge more on a retail level. Did you see the CarMax? CarMax's quarterly earnings came out today. Did you see how many cars they bought last quarter? I did not. I did not get a chance to read that, but I would I would love for you to share that with me right here on the spur of the moment. So yeah, let's uh, do that. their stock was down uh twelve and a half percent today, but they their um their revenue was up considerably. Their well, how does that well you gotta help me with this? If their revenue is up considerably, why would their stock go down? 
because the stocks are forward looking to add what's going to happen in the future. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Unlike me, who's who's backward looking. <laughs> so they sold 419, called 420,000 cars in the quarter, which is okay. a lot. They've never sold over a million in a year. And obviously that's a, a heck of a run rate. Let's yes. see, does this one have how many they bought? Uh, let me see. Let me find one that says how many they bought because it was a staggering number. Yeah. All right, parents. All right, we get it. We get it. We get it. Yeah, sign up. Give them. Give them some money. <laughs> oh, not, not this one either. Okay. I. It was four hundred and seventy thousand vehicles that they bought directly from consumer. I, I'll find the the source so we can. And they sold how many? Four hundred and twenty. So they bought fifty thousand more vehicles than they than they sold. Yes, and wow. again, it speaks to. I mean, the pressure that a local dealership is feeling if CarMax is actually fine on inventory. And yes. I, I sent an email off to one of my contacts over at Carvana today. Uh, mm -hmm. And he was saying, no, we're just, we're like, our issue is we can't recondition them quick enough, which is kind of a little bit of a warning siren to say, like, yeah. make sure you get. Yeah. Make if they sure recondition them at all. But yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's their issue. And honestly, it's yeah. very, I'm not going to pull up the email thread. That, can, that I can, can I share a little something with you from like 9,000 years ago? Uh, when yeah. I when I first started in the business and uh, somebody came in and it was early evening and a car had just come in that day. And so the salesperson said to him and, the, and a customer wanted to buy it. And the salesperson said, well, did you want the hot water or cold water PDI? Uh, because all the salesperson was going to do was pull the plastic off and wash the car. Yep. Um, PDI stand for pre-delivery inspection. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and the salesperson told him he'd be better off just asking for the cold water PDI at the shower. <laughs> Bob's, yeah. we have from B. Molhauser, no inventory. I work for a big GM dealer. We have no new vehicles and none coming soon. Yep, that's that's the unfortunate reality. We yes. had a very thoughtful uh, donation from Jig Snaps. Thank you for that. We really appreciate it. Or is that Jig's Nap? Could be Jig's Nap. Yeah. One or well, other. either way, thank you. Thank you exactly. to both of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a peek at the incentives. What's going on in the incentives market right now? Yes. Yeah, since I haven't looked at those either. Yep. What the hell have I been doing all day? They bought 470,000 cars. That's just insane. Yeah, that is. All right. So each week, Automotive News updates what the customer incentives are. Um, and these are programs that are supposed to start. Tomorrow, perhaps. Uh, these were ten four, so this is Monday. This is this okay. is as next Monday. Okay. Um, okay, so we've got BMW with nada. So still some, some finance and finance rates on twenty twenty twos, and they've got very little cash on twenty twenty ones, and um, they've got uh, cash on Mini Countryman, of which. I don't know. Dealers don't have any minis, so I don't know why they have to put cash in. That's got to tell you how how poorly that countryman must sell. <laughs> of all the minis, and, and I, you know, and, and you know, I I'm a lover of minis. Yeah. But of all the minis, the countryman was my least favorite, and I would, I swore I would never get one. And I've I've been a man of my word. I've had a roadster. I've had a two door hardtop. I've had two clubmen. I would never have a, a, a country. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah. Um, Ford on the edge. They have $2,000 right now. Yeah, also yeah but on that's the because Escape. this is the last year of the edge. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So that makes sense. $250 on the Escape. These are national incentives. So there are still like affinity group incentives and there are still um, uh, like college discount, things like that, military and, discount. So and there might be some regionalized incentives as well if there are parts of the country that have more inventory than others. Yes, yes. Which I actually did do um, in advance. So I'll come back here to incentives. We post the incentives back on the YAA community forum, by the way, yes. under um, uh, where is it? Rebates and incentives. So if you're interested in looking at that in more depth without having to watch wherever, wherever I scroll, you can do that there. But I did want to show you that actually in advance of coming on tonight, I wanted to kind of look at what's going on regionally in terms of inventory. Yes. So I went to Subaru. Okay. And I took a Subaru Outback. I took one that's here locally in my area, which would be at Fitzgerald Subaru. Yeah. So here in the Washington, D.C. area, there are 20 Subaru Outbacks for sale 
within a hundred mile radius of Washington, DC right now. That now, that's the, not nearly enough. <laughs> no, there's one at <laughs> this one. The reason that the average time on lot is 33 days is in yeah. part because I think everyone is just keeping one, at least like one listed for sale on their website. So that's what allows us to say that, you know, it's on and, their lot. And and the other reason would be is they're probably listing on their on their websites these days, they're in transit vehicles. Definitely. So, that's so much. Yes. Yes. So the average, uh, or excuse me, the, the, the market day supply within the Washington DC Metro is 33 days. Now look at this. I ran a similar vehicle, same vehicle, essentially. Uh huh. I ran one over in LA. Yes. This one, Holy. literally, they just started advertising it today. Wow. And the day supply is half. Wow. Now there's 72 vehicles for sale. Right. So there's there's more than three times as many vehicles for sale, but obviously the demand over there is very different. I, I would also I would also say the population is uh, is probably three times larger than than the Washington, D.C. metro area. But it speaks to your comment, right, of, OK, what's going on in a particular area, which can then impact regional incentives. Yes, you know, absolutely. There's a pocket of the country that has way more inventory than another. There could be some regional incentives, although. Not super likely right about now. No, but there could be some. There, 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 there's probably some vehicles that are just not selling in a particular market. And the manufacturer is going to, going to say on a regionalized level, okay, in this market, let's put a $1,000 uh, regional incentive on that vehicle. Definitely. Yeah. I'll post that back on the YA community forum after tonight's stream. So you're able to take a peek at it, the different incentives that are going on out there. Um, but it's, I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is at this point, right? Prices are high. They're going to continue to stay high. And the big kind of, I don't want to call it necessarily breaking news, but I think everyone's coalescing around the idea that there's not going to be a quick fix here and that no. all of the pageantry and saying that everything's going to be okay is exactly what that is. It's pageantry. It's not reality. There's going to be a continued shortage here, and no one knows when it's going to be resolved, unfortunately. Well, there's there's probably a handful of executives at the major manufacturers that have a real good idea as to when it's going to be resolved, and they've been sworn to secrecy, and they refuse to share that information with any of their underlings um, for the fear that it, well, I don't know, might actually become public. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so Pops, you alluded to something at the beginning of tonight's stream. Also, we've got uh, a, a yeah buddy here from Daniel Lewis, which is in all caps. And I have Daniel Day Lewis, the great actor, um, um, and there will be blood. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Also, very uh, timely comment here, yeah. from, where some manufacturers are talking about cutting production of models that always sold slower and had less demand to make way for other popular models. Makes sense. It's an opportunity for manufacturers to, sure. to you know, uh, what's it, what's it called? Prune the prune the. Uh, they can they can prune, yeah. They they can it finally can give manufacturers the opportunity to discontinue cars that they shouldn't have been building in the first place. <laughs> they can well they can they can thin the herd, so to speak, because. I mean, think about it. At BMW, you have a one series, a two series, a three series, a four series, a five series, a six series, a seven. How many damn series do you need? How how many niche markets do you really need to be in? Um, where at a certain point, when you go, okay, this this particular niche vehicle sells five thousand a year. Why are we even bothering to build it? Why are we forcing our dealers to have to deal with it? Hey, you're, you're preaching. I, I get it. And, and I agree with you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's probably the same guy that came up with the ZDX. That's all I know. That's what I was thinking too. Cole yeah. the herd. That's, that's the phrase. That, that there thinking. you have it. Yeah. Cole or thin. Yeah. So I want to play, I want to play an audio clip for you pops. Then I think what we should do is we should go to some of the comments back on the community forum and also on today's video so that we can address some of those. Then we'll go to the chat, help as many people as we can. Call it a night. Sound good? I'm, 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 I'm here for you and everybody else that might be watching. All right. Ready? Yes, sir. Hey, this is a message from Kevin West, new member. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> and don't forget, if you try to go on an almond or almond milk diet, You'll go nuts. 
I well, saw Kevin well, in the chat. Also, his delivery there, I don't know if that's like how you speak, Kevin, in general, but like your delivery was spot on. Like it was yeah. like the, so slow, but like so methodical. So thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. My God, that was good. Thank you, yeah, Kevin. Really, really fun. Yeah. You can always actually let me put that up on the screen. If you're interested it's, in having your voicemails played on the show, that's the phone number to leave him at. I, I wonder if he's related in any way to Kanye. Kevin, are you related to Kanye West? Open question of the night. Yeah. Okay, Dad, let me share the screen again and let's move through. There we go. Kevin's a happy camera. <laughs> um, 800 5042 Leave us a voicemail. We'll play it live on the show. Pops, let's look at some of the comments from tonight and uh, go through and, and, and address them, okay? Absolutely. All right. And Kevin is not related to Kanye West. Oh, you can see okay. That. Okay, we've got from Lemminkus Menicus. Ray, the chip shortage is getting worse and the car industry is suffering badly. But if you think about it, this may be intentional and benefit to mankind and us lemmings. We have known for many years that the military program Skynet was supposed to achieve sentience and send murderous terminators to eradicate humans from the earth. Do you think the chip shortage is stopping that? Or are we finally going to be safe? Really a big brain, que uh, brain, big brain question here from Lemminkus. What do you think, Pops? Uh, well, I, I think... If you really want to be safe, you you have to build like a bomb shelter out of almonds, um, because I believe the almonds are impenetrable. So that you, yeah, no, I'm sorry, but that's what I I'll, that that's what I people have said. That's what I've heard. Someone once mentioned. Okay, I'm done. Uh, Mike, could C, you could you make that bigger so I can read it too? Oh, oh, look at that. Let's back from a trip to Ireland. Gas there is about eight dollars and rising. Yikes! Used car supplies become so tight that they are about to restart importing used vehicles from Japan and also a right-hand drive market. Used wow. to be a very used to be very common back in the late seventies and eighties to see used Japan models there with unusual specs. Any chance of the U.S. market sourcing used vehicles from outside the U.S. or regulatory authorities? A hill too high to climb, even if vehicle supply was available. There must be slack capacity on car transporter ships with reduced. New vehicle production. Dad, I can imagine you have some interesting stories to share around this. Um, would you mind kind of opening up with your experience on vehicles that weren't spec for the U.S. making it to the U.S.? Um, well, I, I I can honestly say the vehicles that I all, I dealt with that that uh, in the 80s that went to Guam and, and other U.S. territories did have to meet U.S. safety standards at that time. If you bring something into the United States that, that's not meet the safety standards and it has to be brought up to current U.S. safety standards before it can be retailed. Um, I have more experience with manufacturers saying to us, you can't sell certain vehicles to known exporters so that they could take a vehicle that was destined for the American market and put it on a ship um, and send it to Africa or Russia or wherever. Um, so I, I've had the reverse Really? Um, yeah. I, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They're known as swimmers. Um, that, that's what, you know, yeah, that's what, I mean, like when the Q7 first came out, uh, they did not want their dealers in the United States. And, and a lot of the dealers were selling them to exporters so that they would go overseas because they could sell them like instantly. Um, and yeah, the, the, the manufacturers don't like that. There's, there's known exporters. And you better not be selling it to somebody that's on the export list that because, you know, they're, they're built for the U.S. market. They want them sold in the U.S. market. They don't want them sold to an exporter that's going to ship it to Russia where he can make three times his money. We've seen some uh, more Canadian vehicles make their way down south and into the United States. What's your stance or what's your take on valuations for Canadian spec vehicles in the U.S. market? Does it hinder their resale value? Uh, I don't know that it will necessarily in this market that it would necessarily hinder the resale value. I know it's it's uh, it's annoying to a certain degree to uh, our Canadian friends up north to have us like taking their used vehicles so they can have a used vehicle shortage. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I dealt with some Canadian vehicles over over my time in the business. It's it, it's more. You see it more in in states that border along Canada uh, than than you did, like for instance, in Arizona when I was there. 
Definitely. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Uh, so we got a question in the chat here that I want to address from Krista R. Just curious, do you have a Chevy dealer recommendation in Arizona? I'm curious if you do. And then also I'm going to do a quick promotion afterwards uh, for dealership reviews back on the YAA community. Well, I can say this. I haven't been in Arizona since 2009. Um, so I don't really know what's been going on in the Arizona market per se, as far as who owns what. Um, you know, when when Lou Grubb and his son Dan Grubb had Grubb Chevrolet, they had a pretty good reputation for the way they treated customers. Um, there are others, um, and I'm not going to get into names because it's it, this is 10, 12 years ago. Um, you know, that had bad reputations. I, I would I would look at online uh, reviews. Uh, I, I would look at better business bureau uh, complaints and things of that nature to try and do your due diligence. But I have no idea who, who a good or a bad Chevy dealer would be. Or you finish my thought. No, 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 no. Come on. I, I don't know it. You finish my thought. No, no, no. Come on. You got it. You got it. I'll, I don't I'll, have it. Oh, whisper it. Ish. No, just do it. Tell people to use the dealer reviews. On I our can't website. hear you. Tell people to use the dealer reviews on our website. Yeah, or you could use the dealer reviews on our <laughs> website, damn it. So back back on the, <laughs> come on, man. Back on the community <laughs> forum. We you have, know, I got too much shit to remember. <laughs> <laughs> damn. <laughs> Oh, man. We have the dealership reviews. There's 64 reviews so far. Um, oh. So here you go. Like Laurel, uh, she, he of Laurel, Maryland, disappointed. Acura of Milford, good experience. So if you're looking for a dealership, this is a good forum to post and to ask if other people have had an experience. There's over 1,300 people in here. So there's likely someone in your area who's dealt with a similar dealership. And you can also find um, other dealerships if you're in the market and, yes. and you're interested in area by searching within here i can't believe we're up to 64 that's awesome thank you everyone yeah. for, for i i need reviews. to go on there you know i on on my on my old macbook today it wouldn't let me on our website it said it was not secure but then it also wouldn't let me on uh, uh arizona wait, wait, central wait. com wait wait a second wait a second yeah wait a second. yeah it said it said our certificate was yeah so you're gonna you're gonna a not pitch our services then you're going to be say our services are not secure. In no, front of they are secure. My computer wasn't. There's something wrong with because I had no problem with this new one. So there's something. I think there's spyware on the other MacBook, is what I'm trying to say. Do you really think so? Well, why else would it suddenly just happen? Well, then stop. Like, don't log into any business stuff on that computer, please. Okay. And like, I, don't log into your bank or something like that, too. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, won't, I won't do that. I'll, okay. I'll, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do it on one of my 14 other computers. <laughs> Welcome, Krista. Yeah, this is yeah. what you're in for. And if you buy a car, then you can stop hanging out with us and that's a-okay. All right. I was going to show another thing. Thomas, but it's security, man. Data security. We got it. We got it. I was going to show another thing pops back on the community forum. We, we've got one more question to answer back on the comments. And then let's go to the comments on today's video. Okay. Then we'll go wrap I'm in. Let's go. Come on. I'm in. You're holding things up. Not in a bad mood, Igor. In a very good mood. The more you say it, the more it's true. <laughs> oh, man. My therapist taught me that, Doug. It was good. Yeah. What time's your flight tomorrow? 9.30 a.m. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. This is from Rob. Hey, okay. Hi, Jen. So, Balls. Well, Mercedes ELW question. What is ELW? Yeah. What the hell is that? Their new electric thing? Really? Yeah. I'm assuming. Oh, it must be their extended. Oh, extended limited warranty. Okay. There oh, you. okay. Jeez. Okay. How negotiable are they in terms of? Pricing. I have three quotes from three Mercedes-Benz dealers, and they're all close, but it leads me to believe there is room to move. If so, by how much I should try to negotiate, 10%, 15%. My car is two years and 30000 left on the factory. So before you answer this question, Dad, it's a perfect time to pitch the fact that um, back at joinya.com, if you want to um, get a vehicle service contract or extended warranty quote from us, you can do that. Just log in, 
Are, are there any strings idea. attached? There are no strings attached. So like on this Subaru Outback that we were looking at before, you can just click on service contract and there's what it costs to do a 96 month one. Here's what it costs to do a 120 month one. Well, that can't be right. There you go. 96. Arash, if you're watching, man, that was a bug. Got to fix that stuff, man. Got to fix that yeah. stuff. Make me look bad on, on yeah. camera. Yeah, but we don't, we don't want to have to call Terminex. <laughs> here's what the price would be. You can schedule a call that takes you to Miss Kimberly Klein's um, calendar. So you can schedule time to meet with her. Look at that. She even has some availability tomorrow. Um, and then you can actually buy it if you'd like as well. But back to Rob's question, it was how much margin or how much, how negotiable are these vehicle service contracts or extended warranties, Dad? Um, uh, very. Especially on the last day of the month when the F&I manager is trying to hit a bonus level. So, Rob, if it were me, I'd be working those phone lines like right now. Uh, most Mercedes dealerships are going to close probably at 8 o'clock. Um, so get on the horn. Talk to a finance manager. See which one needs one more extended warranty sale to hit a new bonus level or, or to impact this pay plan. And yes, they're very negotiable. Typically, the markup is at least 100%. So let's say they're charging you 3000 Maybe it costs them 1500 A couple comments in the chat here. Uh, Igor says, remind them it's only minimum profit and flat fee. You guys are very honest and trustworthy. Can you do that, Pops, please? Yeah, remind them it's only a minimum profit. No, no, say what our pro God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, our, ours is we 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 make a flat five hundred dollars on any extended warranty we sell. Whether whether that extended warranty sells for fourteen hundred ninety three dollars or sells for eight thousand nine hundred and forty three dollars, we're making the same five hundred dollars. You know, if you buy an extended warranty through us that, that uh, somewhere along the line, $500 is making its way to YAA. And then um, Thomas wants to know, do you recommend extended warranties, new cars, new cars? We don't, we don't recommend, we don't, we don't endorse buying them or not buying them. Uh, and especially we, we, just, we just have them available for those who want them. Yeah, and if you're going to buy one on a new car, definitely make sure you anticipate holding on to it. You can always cancel and get prorated refunds, but that's a pain in the tuchus. So yeah, just be, 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 don't just buy one just to buy one. That's that. That's a mistake, in, in my opinion. Yes. Um, oh, here we go. This is cool. From H. Daniel McKillop. Just bought a new 2021 Subaru Asante. Ascent? Ascent, excuse me. Ascent. Ascent. Yeah. Ascent. Ascent. Yeah. Yeah. Here, you read that one, then. Uh, limited. Uh, uh, the out-the-door price was $44,850. Used Papa's templates and found a dealer who wanted to sell before end of quarter. Thanks, guys. Worth every penny of the subscription. There you go. Every now and then, we come in handy. Ascent. You were right. You're just double-checking. <laughs> just double-checking. Yeah. Well, thank you. We've Is got it, a but here. Let me ask you a question. Wait, no, I need to, I need to ask you a question since you're doing pronunciations. Is it putts or puts? <laughs> because every time you do that to me, you're a putz. <laughs> if I blow up, ladies and gentlemen, it's only because I had an internal sneeze <laughs> and not an external one. So here's we've got a comment here from A H, yeah. which might stand for. But I didn't it say could. That. It I could. didn't say yeah. that. I, I did. we're, uh, we're, com we're complete scams. We're complete wow. scams. All car dealers are scams. AH, that is the beauty of our positioning. Man. We're yeah. not a car dealer. We also don't think all car dealers are scams. Igor yeah. is a car dealer. He's incredibly, like at this point, Igor has been here for months and he's yeah. like helping so many people. It's awesome. So no, not all car dealers are scams. We are not scams. I mean, I guess you could. But, you but, you know, it's easy to say derogatory things about people when you can hide behind your little moniker there, A-H. Um, Whoa. You don't know us. We might have to uh, go on Reddit during tonight's stream. Speaking of your templates, someone on Reddit asked car sales, posted one of your templates they received from a potential buyer. Pops, can you vamp for a minute and I'm going to go look for that? Oh, my God. So, so we're making it back to Reddit where you have been banned for life. Okay. Yes, accent. Yes, and uh, is it is it read it or read it? Um, <laughs> One second. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to see if you can find it, even though you're banned from posting anything. I guess you read still it. have access to what others have posted. Is that how read that it. works? Read it. Read, read it. it. Read it. 
Reddit. <laughs> um, yeah. Keep, is there uh, is there like no. logo a frog or something? Reddit. Reddit. <laughs> Reddit. If if if, um, if you have the link to this post, I would love to yeah. pull it up on the screen and get my dad's reaction to it. So feel yeah. free to toss it in the. Uh, yeah, well, toss- they probably they probably trashed it and said we were nothing but a scam anyway. Um, so this is from Mickey Johnson. I leased a 2019 Mini Cooper Club Minute. It has 11,000 miles. Does it make sense to turn it in next year at lease end, or should I just buy it residual? I think this is a really good question, Dad. People who got leases in 2019, what should they do as those leases come due next year? Well, uh, since uh, you're not going to have a lot of miles on the car, and you know everything about that car, and right now the residual value is probably a good 25 to 30 percent below what its current market value is. So it would almost be foolish not to buy it, even if you bought it just so you could sell it and reap the profits, or you just buy it and keep it. I will tell you this: that my current 2020 um, Clubman lease. Uh, will end in December of next year. And I'm assuming things will be as crazy uh, 15 months from now. Um, And so I would think that I will probably end up buying my car, which might have by that time close to 20,000 miles on it, um, that I'll probably just end up buying my car because uh, at the very least I I could sell it and make money and take, take whatever money I make and use it for Lyft and Uber. Yeah, no, well said, Dad. Really, yeah. really well said. And and I think a lot of people are going to be in that situation where they're you know they're in a positive equity situation. What are they going to go do? You know, or uh, or maybe so. maybe Zach, I'll I'll just start driving your scooter. What am I going to do with that thing? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it. <laughs> you know, I'm sure it won't rust much being out in the air all winter long. Thank you, RWD. Please, one I would love yeah. again to look at what Reddit is saying about uh, our email templates. That'd be yeah, that'd be really helpful. We've got yeah. from uh, Core Brent. How are they scams? They're giving fact checkable advice for free on a video you put on. <laughs> um, yeah. well, Money. There, there you have it. Thank you, Core Brent. One, two, three, four. Um, and and yeah, that's really a good question. Uh, but we must be. Because we're a father and son and we talk about cars. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, yeah. let's, let's take a peek back, Dad. I actually want to share something that I think will be um, really valuable for the community at large, which is it's not just about me and my dad. Like This goes well beyond us to the point where I actually think a more valuable aspect right now of what we're doing is the community forum. I'm going to click on success stories. I know we've had quite a few come through here recently. Um, we had this be patient, it just works, successful negotiation. So like whether you like us or not, that's a okay. Yeah, you can come in and you can see what other people are doing, the deals that they're getting. Give a, like before before this before you could read about Stephanie's experience and what her out the door price was and what she did. Like, how would you know what's a fair price to pay right now? It's really kind of a black box. And so our goal is to to continue to build this community so that we can all just help each other. Um, so it's really not all about us and whether or not we're good people or not. It's just like. We want to provide the infrastructure so we can help people. Yeah, uh, well, you know, some people don't want the help. Yeah. Or or they perceive the help as somehow being a scam. RWD, please post the link in the chat. Give me one second. I'm going to see if I can grab that real quick. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, I'm so excited. It's been a long time since I've been this excited. When was the last time you got... Uh, this um, excited? You know, well, when they painted my bathroom. And- thing. What? Uh, oh, here we go. All right, so let me click on this. Uh, all right, give me one second. Yeah. Uh, bear with me. Hey, I'm, I'm not going nice anywhere, buddy. They're not nice things. What do you think they're going to say? I'm, I'm guessing they're going to say not nice things. Okay, ready? I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're all waiting for it. We're all, all right. hanging, we're all hanging on the uh, space bar or whatever. The mouse. Yeah. Oh, this is from um, Dad. Spitful harm. A uh, spitful ham. This is um, what's is his it spitful or spiteful? Spiteful, Dad. Let's not name his name, but this is the sales manager at the mini store you used to work at. You trained him. Um, yes. I'm blanking on his name. You're not. No, I'm not. And I'm, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad worked at the mini dealership where this yeah. Reddit user 
is a yeah. sales manager who might. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I might have trained them a little bit. <laughs> so, okay, let's read this. This is interesting. Yeah. Yes. For context, we sell and have been selling for the past two years every electric hardtop at MSRP, and they're all factory ordered. Also, we don't get hold back, and factory ordered cars aren't put on floor plan. It's amazing that anyone would still try and do this in the current environment. I'm almost 700 miles away from him, so he's been at this a while. I wished him good luck. So, Pops, this is actually – all right, let's break this yeah. down because – the sales manager who you trained at the yes, major, I did. Saying yes. that, you, that you don't get hold back on factory ordered cars aren't put on floor plan. Is that is that accurate? Um, well, the, you have to realize that Mini doesn't have hold back, so they don't get hold back on anything. They they earn extra dollars by by hitting uh, various metrics that that Mini or BMW sets up for them. Um, but but no, they don't they don't get hold back. Now there could be incentives, um, and uh, no, what 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 he's saying is they're not going to put the car on floor plan because it's an ordered car. But if there is floor plan assistance from the manufacturer, they would get the floor plan assistance. And I mean, I I mean, you literally ran this mini dealership, like you get yes. floor plan. Yeah, I I did. Yeah, you get floor plan assistance on any any vehicle on any vehicle. Yes. Yeah. But but there is there is no So this is accurate. This is, this is accurate. Factory ordered cars aren't put on floor plan. Correct. No, why, no you wouldn't put them on get floor, floor plan. plan. Well, yeah, I I mean in the sense that, you know, if they're on floor plan, they're on floor plan for a day or two, which is like not really having them on floor plan. But again, you still get the floor plan assistance. Yeah. You, yes. You, yes. Hi. Sorry, I'm just doing. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Have a nice yeah. night. Yeah. Um, this is so fascinating, though, Dad, because, I mean, you – I love when they tell me what I will do. So this is interesting because we, we do get feedback, um, you know, on your email templates. And, yes. and typically they work. Like, we have success story after success story. Back yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of dealers that, that aren't going to appreciate the emails or even respond to my type of emails. Because um, you're taking control in a way that they're not used to or don't want. Yeah, they, they, you know, it, everything, everything in a dealership is about control and, and salespeople and managers are trained to not abdicate the control. They're trained to figure out ways to always maintain control. And so if an email comes in that makes it more difficult for them to do that, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that there's a lot of sales managers and a lot of salespeople that are lazy, um, but if it's going to be more work, then they're not interested. You know, they, they much prefer a flop to somebody that they have to work at uh, because they're, they're convinced that if they work at it, it's going to require even more time than normal and it'll end up being a mini deal and I'm not going to make any money. So why should I bother? Catch a baseball. Why is showing me that an extended warranty is available for my 2005 Ford Ranger low mileage truck? I never realized the vehicle this old is eligible. Is that correct? Sounds like it is. That's great. Yeah. Go for it. Pops, yeah. there's uh, someone in this thread actually calls out YAA by name, which I think is both fascinating and also need, you know makes needs to make us in order to make sure that these templates aren't just getting tossed aside because people then know it's an educated buyer. Although in this yeah. market, it's really shocking regardless, but it's like the YAA factory order template is alive and well. See it in the video along with its OTD and lease siblings. That template seriously predates them. Dealers have been receiving. Yeah, well, I don't I don't think you're trying to say like, hey, you're I, I, invented. I, this I'm is not saying this. Is, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm not like Al Gore. I didn't invent the Internet, for goodness sake. Uh, you know, but but I've seen faxes and I've seen emails and I tried to craft an email that I thought might might inspire uh, uh, people at the dealership to actually respond in the manner in which uh, the customer asked them to. That's all. I, I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm refining the damn thing. Yeah. And, and this is what's fascinating. Like we have this, you occasionally find a good tidbit of information after wadding through the other 98% of bull crap and utter cringe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to each their own. However, yeah. I want to I want to throw out there. The tricky thing about this is this email template is not yeah. meant to be adversarial. And I think the issue is when you present yourself as an educated card buyer, it immediately becomes adversarial because the dealership expectation is like we're going to go to battle and I'm going to grind out and hold yes. gross profit as possible. And so like 
especially on an online forum like this, you're going to have a lot of comments that are adversarial, which is unfortunate, but it also kind of brings to light like how important it is the work that we do. And as a community, what we do to show eventually everyone's going to be educated and this is going to be a much simpler system for us and for you. And everyone yes. will benefit because of that. It's going to take decades for that to actually happen. Also, yes. I have over 80 factory orders right now at the mini dealership. <sighs> Does that that's that seems crazy to me? Eighty? Well, you know, we used to when I ran the store. I mean, first of all, we didn't have the shortages that they have now. But you know, we we did a a pretty decent amount of orders because Mini is the whole concept of the brand is that you can you you it, they call it minification. You can make it how you want it. Um, you know, most brands. Are, are building cars that are for 94% of the buying public and, and the other 6%, they figure, well, they, the hell with them, you know, we're, we're not going to build special cars for them. And, and mini is like, they're, they want to serve the 6% that want the unusual car that want to build a car the way they want it. And so, uh, you know, with, with like millions of different variations as to how you could, build your mini what was the likelihood that the dealer would actually have exactly what it was that you wanted on the dealer's lot so yeah sure. we did we did a ton of factory orders right now they're probably pops. doing more because there's no cars pops we've got a couple comments here uh daniel lewis thank you for for the contribution we're glad to be able to help i ordered thank a new you. suburban and placed a 500 dollars deposit I was quoted a discount of $4,800. Is this rare in today's market? Yeah, yeah. let me help you with that. Yes. <laughs> Alarm bells going off. Yeah, that, yeah. That, hop yeah. on that. That, 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 yes. That's a great deal. And Pops, then I want to come here to AH. A lot of people are going to be upside down in the next few years. AH is also yes. suggesting yeah. some other things that I don't yeah. agree with. But we wrote an entire article about how we are so concerned about that. And we even, Dad, did you did check a video. out- We've done videos. Have you yeah. checked out stopbuyingcars.com? Have you have you been to that website? Because I uh, think not recently. we own that, don't we? I do believe we do. I think you bought that domain name live on the air one night when I said, hey, stopbuyingcars.com. Somebody needs to do that. And you, being the industrious young man that you are, uh, you reached in, you pulled out your corporate credit card, and you bought the damn thing. Stopbuyingcars.com. This is a public service announcement. Yes. Announcement. Stop buying cars. If you need to buy a car right now, emphasis on need, follow these instructions. It takes you to the how to buy a car in 2021. But stop buying cars. Share this link on social media. Share this with a friend. Share this with your spouse. Share this with a sibling. Share this with your dog. Share this with your other dog, like your homie dog, not yeah. like your dog. Like all the dogs. Yeah. Stop yeah. buying cars. I mean, and, 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 you know, that was one of our major concerns is that if and when things normalize, that all these people that have been paying way too much for these cars, um, you know, they're going to be in a severe inequity, equity or inequity situation, negative equity situation. Um, and one of the things that we we talked about was the absolute need for gap insurance if you're financing one of these vehicles because most people aren't putting down enough money to make sure that there won't be negative equity that, that exists if the vehicle were to be totaled in some way or another. So, yeah, if if, if things go ass backwards um, or bass backwards, uh, yeah, a lot of people could get hurt. And that's been one of our major concerns, and we've talked about it, and we've written a blog about it, and, and I don't know, it just... It just to us, it seemed to make a great deal of sense because, well, we're all about consumer advocacy and well, you can't advocate that people spend crazy amounts of money for cars and not try to protect their interests somewhere down the line. Absolutely. If, if you don't need to buy a car, don't buy a car. If you need yeah. to buy a car, then use the damn email templates. And if you piss yes. some people off and, and on that path, at least you're going to know you're getting a fair price. And if you need to buy a car more than likely with what is transpiring right now, and this is only if you need to buy a car, if you can't wait, it will probably be cheaper today than it will be tomorrow. 
because as shortages continue and demand continues, then prices will continue to spike upward. Exactly, Dad. Exactly. I, I read something on um, Automotive News recently, and I wanted to actually pull it up while we're on the stream. So give me one second. I want to try and pull this up. Maybe you can um, uh, vamp for a minute. Actually, Dad, I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Of the myriad the- ways. Yeah, that's, that's what I frequently do. Of the yeah. myriad ways that we like help and like, I want you to do a throw. I want you to do a pitch for ya for like the 20 seconds that I need to pull up this article. I want to hear it. Your best, your best, like do the your old find the best car price.com pitch, but for us, please. Listen, if you if you're in the market for a car today, and, you and should. let me finish. If I'm doing the pitch, you shut the hell up. Okay. <laughs> if you're if you're in the market for a car today, and you shouldn't be, but if you are, then you owe it to yourself to go to joinyaa.com, where we have tools and and templates and other items that you can utilize that can help mitigate some of the excess pricing that dealers are asking for today. So do yourself a favor. Do your friends, your family, and your neighbors a favor. Go to www.joinyaa.com, and we're going to try and help you through these tough times. How, how yeah, that buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> and you gave me yeah. enough time to actually pull this up. Thank you for that, pops. Also, I could give you your own Rayshevska stamp of approval, but that's a little weird. Also, Lighthouse Flame. We currently have one viewer over on Twitch, <laughs> and it is you, Lighthouse. Flame. Yeah, way I like that. I don't know. Oh, that's the gaming site. Yeah. Let me know if Kyler Murray's on there tonight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Oh, man. We've got some fun stuff. Okay. Let's look at this uh, quickly from Automotive News. Then I want to pull up uh, something that I think is quite funny. And we'll go from there. Oops. That's just what I think is funny. But we're doing this first. <laughs> GM to revamp customer experience with Ultify. Ultify. They probably paid a million dollars for that name. Ultify platform in 2023. What is that? It is their connected car uh, infrastructure. So the idea here is over the over the air software updates. Dad, yeah. the platform is part of GM's plan to develop a wider profit net through services that extend beyond vehicle purchase. This is scary. What they're talking about doing is essentially integrating so much software into the vehicle that they're then able to either upsell you on future things through the software updates or restrict access to functionality within the vehicle unless you pay access. unless you pay extra oh man these people they just don't quit capitalism it's not, is a beautiful thing you got to figure yeah. out ways to make more money they yeah will. yeah ultify Hey, if you can't get Wi-Fi, get Ultify, the ultimate in Wi-Fi. But that, see, that's the type of energy we need on the Join YAA. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you can't get a good price of the car, join YAA.com because we can help you. A little bit. There you go. This is from Amir. Thank you, Amir. Got an F an F one fifty Power Boost Platinum for MSRP minus eleven hundred in incentives from Ford and zero percent, and they overpaid for my truck. I've been furious in twenty nineteen. Now I feel like I crushed it. Deals. That sounds incredible. Yeah. Well, I, I'm 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 assuming that you know, just to be able to buy a car at MSRP is a pretty good deal today. Um, he he utilized the Ford incentives that Ford had given the dealer to help them move the car. And yes, if the dealer is overpaying for your trade and then you have come out ahead. And that this is one of the few times in, in history in the um, automobile business where the value of used cars keeps skyrocketing. And, it, and if you have a trade, it can help offset some of these ridiculous prices that the dealers are asking for the new cars. Great Shevska step. You know, I, 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 I recently learned how to actually give people the Ray Shefska stamp of approval or the Kimberly Klein stamp of approval when I'm, I'm feeling, uh, uh, it's better over here than YouTube. Dad, we wow. have two viewers on Twitch right now. Yeah. Well, you know, wow. That's wow. Cool. That's, I guess that's way cool. All right, so here's the deal. My yeah. dad is pretty damn cool. We posted a selfie. 
No, wait a second. Who who posted this? Because it wasn't me. Okay. We posted a selfie, but I did it. Okay. <laughs> and and where did you get that picture? Did I did I mistakenly send it to you one time when yeah, I actually I tried that know. sweater on? You sent that in the uh, family group chat. Like, yeah. You you like, you. I know. Like, like anything like that's in the family group chat is is accessible to the internet. Really. It's a family group chat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think of all all these community members and everything as family, but you know, I'm not texting them all. And when was that from? Like a year over a year ago? Here's a text message I got from my dad today. I'm reading it off my phone. He was he, um I, I had dinner with I'm gonna use it with my girlfriend last night. I had dinner with okay, my girlfriend. Okay, very and nice. And I told my dad. And uh, and so today I get a text from him, and it was I'm gonna I'm gonna read it because it's I think very thoughtful. Um, my dad said I couldn't be happier for you, handsome. He calls me handsome, very cute. I do. I hope you two keep those exclamation points going for many many years to come and a lifetime, if that is what you two choose. Looking forward to tonight. And my response was, Oh man, okay, less pressure on me, please. Whatever it is, it is. Have a nice day. Because I don't want my dad being like, you're going to spend the rest of your life. What did I say? And and what was my response to your response? My response was, no pressure at all. I agree completely, whatever it is, it is. Then my dad goes on to say, this is fantastic. I just shaved so that I can look ruggedly handsome tonight. Okay, so I can look like a clean-shaven Pillsbury (laughs) Doughboy. Uh, yeah, it's it's true. I said it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you are so funny, man. I was thinking, hey, could I could I screenshot that and put it on the internet? But I, you know, it's no, funny. no. You, you 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 instead you took that picture of me and that stupid sweater. I I have no idea why I bought it. Okay, I should have never bought it. Uh, it's for a much younger person, not just an old fart who thinks young. Okay. I look ridiculous in that sweater. And I want you to know, I believe I wore it out in public once and I, and I just felt like embarrassed the whole time. Okay. So here's the deal. So we took that embarrassment that you felt and we manifested that onto the internet. And you did without and so, my permission, I might say. And so here's the deal. Yeah. It's a contest. It was initially a caption contest and we're going to award some winners. Yeah. However, what ended up happening, which I think is beautiful, is some people took this selfie <laughs> of my dad. Yeah. And they started, this one I did. They yes. started photoshopping it into different backgrounds. So that's and what did I hit. and what did I say in that? What was my? I'll I'll, I'll pull that up in a second. Yeah, um, we have a yeah, buddy. I like that my one. dad. And <laughs> I love this. Song. Yeah, um, and then yes, Melissa did this one. Yes, um, dad at the ski <laughs> slopes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I encourage you if you're if you're savvy out there and you know Photoshop, um, put my dad somewhere and tweet it back at us. We're at Join YAA. Um, I would love to. We're reposting them to our Instagram story as well. They're absolutely hilarious. And then yeah, Dad, I um, where instead of Where's Waldo, we can we can go Where's Ray. Exactly. Yeah. I think it was on the general channel. Um, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Oh yeah, know. Traveling Adventure of Pops. Yeah. I think Zach is having a good time poking fun at his father. Truth is, I didn't want to flaunt my wares and embarrass the guy in front of his girlfriend. Yes. Are you wearing sunscreen in this, Dad? I didn't know you've been going out to the beach. Sunscreen, I'm wearing sweater screen, which is the best screen of all. <laughs> Let me know if you want to borrow my sweater. Yeah. yeah don't uh, worry. There's no, there's no sun penetrating that fabric. No, definitely not. Yeah. Hey, we've got another person watching on Twitch. That's three. We're up to three. We're up to three people on Twitch. And we've got someone on Facebook, Dad. John, thanks for being here. Oh, my Uh, God. Bless you, John. (laughs) John's Uh, with us every week on Facebook. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who's who's a part of this. I can't believe there's three people on Twitch. That's so cool. That's that's really awesome. We have no clue how Twitch works. I've got one final plug that I want to do the night, Dad. So I guess I'll kick it over to you before we um, before we kind of wrap things or start start closing things down here tonight. We're closing things down. I mean, I, I, I mean, we don't have to. We can just. 
I've only got one more thing on top of mind for me. Well, I, I thought there was some stuff from the uh, community you wanted to go over. Oh, was there? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I misunderstood. Kevin's on there on Twitch, too. Thanks for being yeah. here. Yeah. God bless him. So I wanted to do a quick promo for um, my dad and I have been making some other content. It's not getting like a ton of love, and that's A-OK -okay because it's very different. Um, however, it's on the Ray and Zach channel. I've been having or asking my dad, and he's been willing to um, listen to music and react to it. Um, if it's okay with you, Dad, I want to play like a small clip, it, clip here. Is that okay? S certainly. Or are you going to do I young, much young? Are you going to do Young Boy NBA? No, I actually liked. We had a snippet from this video. Oh, okay. Um, where is it? Where is it? I don't know. Give me a second. Oh, actually, I think it's like. Oh, yeah, it's in here. It's a little loud. Give me a second. Oh, is this is this is this uh, is this little little Leroy? This is your boy, little Leroy. I love this song. All right, give me a second. This will be yeah. less loud. There it is. Be careful. I know you've got a bad shoulder. I don't want you to. I can't help myself. I got the music in. <laughs> now, if you caught me running down the street, I'd probably drop dead shortly after they filmed that scene. But that's besides the point. This, this has got good drive to it. This is good. Um, so, if you're curious to see how our, our lives have started to devolve, there you go. Um, we're having is that up somewhere? Is that video up somewhere? Yeah, and there's like more people on Twitch and, and Frank. Too. Oh man, I gotta watch that that up because because that had that that had the that Justin Bieber character in it. Bieber it had a little bit of Bieber essence and uh, with a crew cut, and uh, and and our Australian buddy Lil Leroy. Yes, my dad calls the kid Leroy Lil 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 Lil. Leroy. Um, and yes, we definitely just got a copyright strike. But you know what? We're having fun. We're, 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 we're trying to help people buy cars in a market where you really can't buy cars. So yeah. stop buying cars com. We're doing and, that. We're, and we're trying to help Lil Leroy. Leroy. And we're trying to help Lil Leroy. Mm, yeah. His career. Um, yeah. Pops, that's all I had. Uh, that's all I had for tonight. Igor wants to know who won Lifetime Membership and Free T-Shirt. Are we doing another Lifetime Membership contest? Well, didn't you do one uh, not too long ago? Did you give out a lifetime I, membership? I you gave out free T-shirts to everybody that sent in a voicemail. Yeah, I sent out a dozen free T-shirts um, last week, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, you know, you know, throw out a random lifetime membership because you had promised that there was going to be a lifetime membership. We've got some. We've got some stuff planned for November around Thanksgiving time. So stay tuned for that. Um, we'll definitely be doing some giveaways then. We have someone who wants some actual right. advice from us, Pops, not, okay. not gimmicking around. What's the reasoning behind, if any, that leasing would make more sense in this in these crazy markets? Great question. Well, the reasoning behind it is that typically you lease a car for 36 months. And the hope would be that three years from now, uh, we will have returned to some type of new normal Um something other than what we're going through right now. Uh, so if that's the case, you could mitigate the excess cost of a vehicle and have it amortized over th the three-year use that you would get out of it, as opposed to, say, financing it for 72 months and three years from now, um, owing way more on that vehicle still than it's worth. So you would just be three years from now, if you bought a car and financed it for 72 months, you're going to be the proud owner of a, of an S ton of negative equity. And if you lease, you're done. You're, you're clean. There's no negative equity to worry about. There's nothing. You get to start fresh. That's why I believe my humble opinion, why it makes more sense to lease today when these cars are overpriced and overvalued. 
Well said, Pops. And Igor's reminding us that the contest we had running was on the uh, comment on the picture. So actually, yes, Igor's 100% right. This is still ongoing. This this yeah. I get to run a little bit longer. So both on Twitter, we have the photo and the contest running. But also, if you come back to YouTube and you go to, uh, I'll just do it this way. If you go to the community page here on your channel, community. Um, Oh my. Yeah, on the contest, there's 157 captions on this so far. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the greatest chef's of them all? I, I like, like that. That's a good one. The chicks at Boca are going to love this sweatshirt. I doubt it. <laughs> Pops does his Volkswagen Harlequin impression. <laughs> oh, it's Zach. He probably wants my advice. Swipes to send to voicemail. <laughs> I like this one. Zach, what color sweater are you wearing? Pops. Yes. <laughs> Oh my God! For yeah. the thirty percent off MSRP for the Dick Tracy color option, and they took it. Son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Outfit by Fisher Price, vote by Hasbro. Yeah. There's uh, nothing. There's nothing worse when you make a ridiculous offer and then they take it. <laughs> I had to take this call. It's my yeah buddy Igor calling. <laughs> Uh, I always get the extended warranty. So you can comment on this as well. We will be picking winners from here. And then we also have the contest running on our Instagram page, which is um, at your advocate Alliance. Let me go there profile. Uh, I'm at Shevska. My dad's at Raz's jazz at your advocate Alliance. We have the photo here as well. 42 comments here, which is, which is pretty great. So I'm sure there are some good ones here as well. Honestly, I'm not sure what the hell I was thinking when I bought this sweater, but whatever it was, it was incredibly wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was. It really, I mean, you know, I, God, I, 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 I've made Help a few mistakes. Slow up faster than a Chevy ball. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a few mistakes in life, but that sweater was one of the biggest. Um, okay, we've got some questions coming in through Twitch. So here, here you go. Uh, Zachary, have you noticed that residuals and leases at the moment when compared to pre notice that reason, uh, has they it changed? Been I, yeah. you know, I, 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 I haven't, I think the yeah. residual values are still about what they had been two or three years ago, because I got to believe that the lease companies are anticipating three years from now that things are going to return to normal. Um, so I, I'm guessing that that the residuals are probably pretty similar to what they would have been three years ago. Yep. yep. And also back on the back on the community forum, we've got uh, uh, Mario Space, who's really helping a lot of people out with their lease deals. So if you're yes. working a lease, put it back on the community forum. We've got some folks there to help. Try hard. Thank you for the contribution. We really appreciate that. that but come well. on, at a buck, you didn't really try all that hard. <laughs> come on, Dad. that's very thoughtful <laughs> of them to continue. Thank you, try hard. I that was that was so unbelievably wrong of me and i do apologize profusely down goes shevska down <laughs> goes shevska pops let's call it a night i got a flight at 9 30 a.m tomorrow morning and okay. i'm gonna go hang out with my girlfriend so i think you should life. i think you should say hi to her for me uh have have a have a great weekend um stay safe don't do anything stupid um and uh um, uh, when do you come home? I come home on Sunday. So okay, yeah. well, yeah. Let me know that you're alive and well. Will do, pups. Thank okay. you, everyone, for being here. Thanks for being a part of the YA community. And uh, shall I do one more? Sure. Yeah, buddy. Good night. There you have it. Good night, everybody, and thank you all. We couldn't do this without you.